Okay, so if you um, if you open up any one of your um, uh, power banks or something like that, right? So there you are you are taking an AC input and you are converting into direct uh, current, right? Um, and a DC. So generally you use diodes for that. And if you open up one of those uh, things, I wanted to show you that, but maybe uh, next time I'll bring a picture. Um, so you will see these diodes in there, and diodes are you. They look like this, okay? So you will see uh, something that looks like this. Almost like a resistor, and then there is a piece of metal, okay, like this, and then there is a some kind of line on one side, and what that line indicates is a cathode connection, K, okay, remember that, and everybody knows how to figure out anode and cathode, huh? If I if I have a diode that looks like this, which one is anode? Will you ever forget? No, kabhi nahi. Good, very good. So if you look from here, that looks like a K. Uh, cathode and if you look from here that kind of looks like an A. So it's anode. Anode is positive and uh, K is negative. Okay, so this K is uh, what this, uh, K, it, it's not actually spelled with K, it's actually spelled with C. But for ease of, uh, you know, remembrance, uh, I'm using K. All right. Okay, so this is what you will find. And then you will see uh, if you open up some of the power banks or older uh, maybe don't open up the, the newer versions of the power banks, but uh, if you look at some old uh, wall transformers, right? I mean, there is something that you plug into the wall and then there is a DC connection that goes to your devices. And if you will see four of them, uh, these kind of things, uh, the bigger they are, the more the current they will carry. Smaller they are, the less the current they will carry, okay? So now, um, with, with this visual introduction of a uh, diode, let's unbox further and let's get inside okay the diode so um, if you if you look at silicon okay uh, so um, there are four valence uh, electrons in its outer um, outer ring okay now um, if you if you take another basically if you look at the silicon uh, atoms right then these four valence electrons will bond with uh, neighboring silicon atoms like this, okay? So there will be electron, electron, electron like this, you know, from each one of them. And they are like, you know, holding hands with each other, except that they are four hands. And each uh, each silicon atom is holding hands with four other silicon atoms. And then those bonds are solid, okay? Basically, um, then there is no empty bond, you know, dangling bond per se. I'm again, you know, simplifying everything for you so that you can visualize the silicon holding hands with the neighboring ones and then there's a strong connection, right? And of course, this is all happening in three dimensions. I'm just showing it in two dimensions right now. Now, so in this particular case, right, you all are used to saying that, hey, silicon is a semiconductor, right? But if you if you look at, look at it in this particular fashion, it actually looks like an insulator, okay? Because all bonds are tight. And you know, nothing can, it, it behaves just like an insulator, hmm? if you just take a silicon. Uh, however, um, what happens is, um, um, as you increase the temperature, if you, uh, temperature is one variable, then these uh, electrons tend to get excited. Huh? And then they have enough energy that they will leave one of the bonds and will go, will start flowing, right? And as the temperature increases, these electrons can uh, leave uh, that it will break that covalent band bond and it will uh, leave the leave the spot and when it leaves the spot what happens there is something called hole okay so the electron is negatively charged so when you look at hole its absence of negative charge means it's positive charge so you have these electron hole pairs uh, which are happening in the silicon and as the temperature increases you can say that it's a semiconductor now you can have some kind of conduction um, of current in uh, through the silicon uh, Okay, so then you have, um, you, you denote P as a holes concentration and you denote N as electron concentration and P times N is equal to Ni square. Ni is the intrinsic carrier con concentration. Hmm. And um, it's given uh, by... 1.5 times 10 to the power 10 per cm cube at room temperature. Okay, so as you increase the temperature, you will start in having uh, increase in Ni square. Um, okay, um, that's what will happen. So this is whole concentration. 
and this is the electron concentration. Okay, so by itself, silicon is not that interesting. In you as temperature increases, but it's very very little amount of uh, current can be uh, can be conducted. So what we like to do is we have to water by itself is not very interesting to drink, right? You, what do you do? You add some lemon in it, so makes it or sugar or whatever you want. So similarly, we like to add uh, something into into this uh, you know uh, silicon, and there are two types of impurities. Uh, uh, although we like to call them impurities, but they are actually helpful impurities. Okay, so they uh, one uh, type of impurity we like to call is called acceptor impurity, and one example of that would be boron. So side note, we used to use boron as a gali also. Don't be a boron. I mean, you don't want to call your friends moron, so you call them borons. So boron has a, it's an acceptor impurity, and then um, when you insert boron into your uh, into silicon, uh, then I'm kind of visually telling you that hey, you have the silicon, and you are adding boron into it, right? B. So what happens is a boron has only three electrons hmm, in its outer uh, outer shell. So of course uh, the boron has about the same size as silicon. It's close by, uh, so it can fit in. Uh, into the lattice as we like to call it okay so if you insert uh, if you kind of take out some of the silicon atoms and you insert boron in between then what do you expect it has only three electrons so what do you expect will happen one of the bonds will be unfulfilled okay and so look, suppose i added um, n sub a a being acceptor okay? acceptor concentration right of the boron so if if i add um, N A as a concentration of this impurity into our silicon, then we expect that many number of holes, huh, which are available to conduct the current. All right, is that clear? Huh? Again, you know, please, I'm I'm explaining things um, in a very simplistic fashion. A person who's expert in devices will probably uh, not be happy with um, many of the explanations I give to you. But then I'll leave it to you. Uh, to study it in in detail in the devices class okay so you have um, n sub a okay so this is number per cm cube okay and so this we do denote it as whole p okay in p type semiconductor so if you add boron to a silicon then we call it call that as a p type semiconductor hmm? why p type because now we have excess number of holes uh, positive charges uh, in in our uh, our silicon all right so if you have uh, holes in a p type semiconductor then you also have electrons hmm, in the same uh, same semiconductor so that will be denoted as n times p and again the the relationship holds true which is equal to n i square okay let's let's spend a little more uh, maybe another minute in this uh, so that is clear. So P sub P times N sub P. What does the P subscript denote? Semiconductor. And the the, the capital, uh, the the not capital. The the first one is actually hole or electron concentration. Is that clear? Hmm? All right. Now, uh, so in this particular case, what what is it P sub P that we said? N A. Okay, because that many uh, boron impurities we added in our silicon bucket, right? So this would be your um, N A. Clear? So this n sub a times n sub p is equal to n i square. So n sub p is equal to n i square divided by n a. Okay, so we get electron concentration in a p type semiconductor is given by n i square divided by n a. Okay, so since n a is kind of larger than our intrinsic concentration, right, because we added extra then the n sub p tends to be smaller in a p type p type semiconductor you will get, you will dominate holes will dominate uh, dominate the picture okay now what we call n sub a is a majority carrier okay and what do we call n sub p minority carrier so now we will kind of uh, uh, do exact flip of this huh? because now we learned about p type semiconductor let's learn about n type semiconductor okay so when you talk about n type semiconductor um, then um, so we use phosphorus p 
Now, phosphorus has five electrons hmm, in its outer shell. Okay, so if I insert phosphorus in a few of the silicon locations, then what do you what do you expect to happen? We have excess excess electron that's dangling around. Okay, and now that electron is available. Eh? We can influence that electron to do something for us. All right. So in in the in the boron uh, or uh, p-type semiconductor case, we had absence of electrons, which is like a hole which we were using for our uh, to our advantage. In this case, we have uh, in phosphorus case, it's an n-type semiconductor now, and we have an extra electron that that's helping us. Okay. Now, uh, so since phosphor is actually donating its electron, you know, for the in, uh, to happen, we call it a basically donor impurity. The other one was called acceptor impurity. And in this case, the concentration of phosphorus uh, impurity is called ND. ND CM for CMK. Now, in this case, we will write the same equation, which is uh, we have Ns of N hmm, times Ps of N. Okay, this N is the type of semiconductor. Okay, the one uh, the subscript is equal to n i square. Now, in this case, the minority carrier concentration, which is holes, okay, in this case will be n i square divided by n d. Is this part clear? All right. Um, okay. So now let's kind of um, so the n type by itself and p type by itself or the uh, silicon by itself is not that interesting. Okay. So only when you Kind of connect them together, things start getting interesting. Okay, and let's uh, let's look at that. So, in a most crudest fashion, hmm, what we can do is we can take maybe a so this is our n-type uh, silicon and this is my p-type silicon. Okay, and then we will say, okay, I will have a piece of metal which is around here to connect something like this. And now we can, again, you know, this is a very crude way of showing you what's really going on. And uh, most of the textbook like to show you this way. Uh, in reality, it doesn't happen that way, but it's okay for our understanding. You know, we can, we can draw the picture this way. All right. So, in this case, it's a P-type uh, silicon. So, uh, this is uh, acceptor. And what is the material? That's boron. Okay, and uh, on the other side we have um, donor, and this is phosphorus. So these are our impurities. Okay, and this is uh, metal contact. Okay, now uh, let's understand um, what's really going on in three different cases with this particular diode okay um, we still let's not call it a diode yet because we have not understood what's really going on okay so it's letting it right now let's call it pn junction we just uh, kind of created a pn junction by itself right so in the open circuit case which means that there is nothing connected uh, to the device okay so what will happen so we call that uh, let's see uh, P N junction. I want to give you a couple of examples so that you visualize what's really going on. And there are only two things which you have to remember. Okay, first one is, um, do you guys use perfume? Yes, no? How many? No one? I hope. Some at least. Okay. So, in case of a perfume, what's really going on? What's the concentration inside the perfume bottle? It's very high. Right? And as soon as you press the button or the top thing, what happens? Uh, that concentration basically at the at the nozzle the concentration is the highest or around that area when you press and then slowly what happens it decreases but what is that process called diffusion, diffusion. okay so remember that so that's a way to remember the perfume example or you can take a bottle um, or a glass of water and you put some ink in it and then you see suddenly the ink doesn't stay in one place, right? It will diffuse through and eventually after a while, uh, the, 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 the color will be a very light, uh, whatever blue or black ink that you are putting in. So that is the process to remember diffusion. Now in this case, in this particular case, we have something similar that's going on, 
okay this part of diffusion that we have to learn okay so the um, what happens in this case is if you if you look at our pn junction at the interface of uh, p type and n type what happens is the p type has excess holes or positive uh, right and then n type has excess electrons so at the interface they just kind of diffuse from one side to another and then some of them will get combined because uh, a hole and electron together it will kind of null out uh, the effect all right so what you will see is um, in the end you will see something like this And all this stuff is just for your visual um, imagination here, right? So you will, uh, from the p-type, some of the holes are gone. Hmm? They are gone to the other side. So what do you think will be left there? If the positive charges have left, then you expect negatively, negatively charged, uh, you know, so these are negatively charged hmm? over here, something like this. And on the, p on the n type case, what do you expect? positive charges right so this will be positive something that looks like this okay so um, what we what we call this region is after uh, both sides exchange their uh, carriers uh, as much as they can is something called depleted area it's a depleted area the carriers uh, you know so it's called depletion region this region is called So that's our depletion region right here. Now, uh, since the charges are kind of separated, there is a potential that exists between these two and that's called uh, basically built-in potential, okay? These charges are separated, right? So there is a positive charges on one side, negative charges on the other side and you get built-in potential and we like to denote it as V0, built-in potential at the junction, okay. Now, whenever the charges are separated, what happens? There is a electric field that will happen. Now, which direction the electric field will be? From positive to the negative, there will be an electric field, okay. So, um, before we get there, uh, because we had um, majority carriers go from one side to another side, uh, they got diffused, okay. So, that diffusion process is called diffusion current. Right, correct, because so you will see something that will look like this. Uh, let's use two different colors. Uh, okay, so this color will show hmm, I diffusion. Okay, and now what we said is there is an electric field which will be uh, there. So the electric field will look like this. Uh, this is our electric field. And the electric field is there because there are charges which are separated at the PN junction. Correct. Um, so now the second part I want you to remember. Okay, what was the first was di diffusion, and everybody remembers how to remember diffusion? Perfume or uh, ink in a in a water. Now the second part I want you to remember is you know I don't know if you ever played in rain uh, when there is a puddle. I used to play. You make boats and you you leave them in a stream and you kind of follow that around, right? So what is going on there? Is there somebody driving the boat? Nobody is driving the boat. So, what's the boat? Where is it going? It's drifting away. And it's drifting because of the flow of water. So, in this case, the electric field is like the flow of water. Correct? And now what happens is that in this area of our silicon, P-type or N-type, the minority carriers are still existing. And where are they coming from, minority carriers? That's happening because due to the temperature, there are some of the bonds are being broken and then there will be minority carriers left with the original silicon. So the minority carriers go under the influence of electric field okay, and they will be flowing in the opposite direction. Okay, So that is something we call it, hmm, this is I drift. All right. So what happens is in the end type material, you will have holes as your minority carriers. Okay, So they will go from, uh, from positive to negative. Okay, in that direction with the electric field. Similarly, the electrons, which are the minority carriers in P-type region, they will go opposite direction of electric field. Okay, so now we have this nice balance of diffusion current and drift current. Okay, once you realize these two currents and visualization for these two uh, phenomenon, then you pretty much have PN junction under, under your control.
Okay, it's a visual way of uh, kind of getting it. And at equilibrium, these two currents are equal hmm? because you know we are not connecting anything to this PN junction that we have. Okay, so at equilibrium, I diff is equal to I drift. Now what we will do is we will apply potential to our diode, okay, external potential to our diode and see what, what really happens, all right. So what we will do is the following, we will um, something like this and we are going to apply, um, this is our P type and this is our N type. So to N type I am applying positive potential and P type I am applying negative potential. So this is kind of like a reverse or opposite. Huh? So this is called VR, reverse bias we are applying, alright. Now if you apply a positive uh, terminal of the battery to N type then what will happen? I mean there were already electrons in the N type, what will happen? They will immediately run towards battery because what does positive side of the battery means? There are excess positive charges. Uh, which are inside the battery because of whatever the reaction that's happening inside the battery all right and similarly on the on the uh, on the p type case you have excess holes i mean basically p type will have majority carriers will be holes right and they will all run towards the negative terminal of the battery so the the holes will go this way and the electrons will go this way okay and they will go towards the battery now what will happen then what happens to our depletion region it will widen further Huh? Because we applied a negative uh, uh, reverse bias potential across the diode, so we are actually making things worse. Huh? We are we are sucking out all the excess carriers in both of them, both sides, huh? electrons as well as holes. We are just taking it out of the equation. So what will happen then is you will see something that looks like this. So you'll have more. Something like this will happen. So now we have increased the depletion region. Okay, is that clear? The reverse bias kind of adds to our original built in potential. Original built in potential was V0, and now we have V0 plus Vr as the uh, potential across our uh, that barrier there okay so um, now so something like this happens now um, what do you think since the uh, since we are already draining out all the majority carriers in both the regions okay there is you can see that diffusion current is kind of reducing uh, to zero almost zero because you are just taking them out of the equation using an external battery. Before that if the battery wasn't there then there is some action going on across the interface but now with the external battery you are just taking out all the majority carriers okay. Not all of them but most of them okay. So what you what you expect here is the diffusion current to reduce, I diffusion okay. However the drift current is still continuing okay. Now we have electric field. Hmm? The, the stronger electric field and the drift current which is the boat example right the boat is is going through uh, uh, um, under that electric field right so that will continue that doesn't change yeah the drift was green so high drift okay so this again what was the high drift it was the minority carriers under the influence of electric field okay which is there at the junction all right. So we are saying uh, this this diffusion current is kind of going to zero. So what is the current that's going to flow dominatingly in a reverse bias uh, diode? It will be the drift current. Okay. So I reverse bias is I drift. And again, this is small because it's like occasional electron just leaving the spot due to the temperature, um, you know, disturbance. I mean, um, temperature excitation. And then it will kind of go, okay, uh, it's in the presence of electric field. So that's like a very small event that's happening, okay, compared to our diffusion. So again, this is not even, in, not that interesting under reverse bias condition, okay, because no action is really going on, right, as we say. Now let's look at the more interesting case, which will kind of suddenly, uh, uh, you know, 
make it very interesting for us which is when we apply a bias which is in the opposite direction okay so we will uh, take our pn junction and then we apply since this is p and this is n we will apply a positive charge positive potential to the battery here so let's call this v forward bias hmm? so this is forward bias voltage so what do you think will happen now now we are artificially pumping in majority carriers okay in both sides okay so this positive terminal is going to supply more more positive charges and this negative terminal is going to supply more negative charges to the uh, to the negative side and then what do you expect diffusion will start you know dominating the action is that clear because now i'm i'm dumping more and more uh, majority carriers in each region okay so then what happens is um, you know you have uh, our barrier out here will start reducing very few and uh, very few something like this okay and the, our potential uh, barrier voltage poten uh, barrier voltage will reduce and that will become v0 minus vf and we reduced depletion region width and as I said now we have a lot more diffusion current flowing in this case right so you will have a uh, let's use uh, what was the color okay purple for this so we have a lot more diffusion hmm. and our um, the reverse bias uh, or the drift current still remains the same hmm. Because there is no no effect on the drift part, which is due to the minority carriers. Uh, so, is this part clear so far? Under the three conditions, what was the original first condition was open circuit, no bias supplied. The second part was reverse bias supplied. In reverse bias, what happens? Diffusion current will it will decrease, and the drift is still there. The drift will always there because that's happening because of the electron hole pairs uh, breaking the bonds and you know occasionally it will get swept away by the electric field all right now the uh, only when you apply a positive potential you are you are pumping in more and more uh, majority carriers in each one of the p or n then there is you are increasing the diffusion okay um, across across the barrier here all right now um, so you can now suddenly see that you know depending upon the potential that i am applying I can make current flow through a diode in only one direction, okay? Only when you are forward biasing the diode. Other cases, it's uh, the, the current doesn't. I mean, current is very small, right? So uh, the equation for the current we can write it as I is equal to I s e to the power v divided by v t minus I s. Okay? So this is our diffusion aspect of it and this is our drift okay the saturation current is drift now what is this vt vt is is equal to kt over q okay so k is boltzmann constant it's 1.38 10 to the power minus 23 you don't have to remember this but i think you should know what the values are okay joule dot second uh, per degree kelvin and temperature t is in degree kelvin not in centigrade okay when you use this okay and uh, so um, see every time writing all these things um, for us as circuit designers right we like to have something um, some numbers in our head and uh, you will see this consistent, consistently, you know, I don't want to remember this 1.38. So what we remember is that room temperature, this value Vt is equal to 26 millivolts at room temperature, okay. So if you change the temperature, I can immediately 
um, you know divide and um, and figure out what the value of Vt is at other temperatures. Okay, every time you don't have to calculate you know put all these things because we like to keep numbers um, you know so that we can do a quick uh, back of the envelope calculation as I like to say. All right. All right. Huh? Huh? Q? Yes, yes. Yeah. Q is the charge of electron. So um, all the other other parameters here. Yeah, this is charge of electron. All right. So now let's analyze this particular equation huh, and what is really going on and uh, how it is modeling. Uh, yeah. Huh? What is the? Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, v. What is V? Correct. He's asking what is V. Okay. I, I'm going to go through each one of the terms as we go along. Just one second. So what we are doing is, so this is the, so this is the circuit hmm? and this is the voltage V that you are uh, applying and this is the current that's flowing. Okay. Now is that clear? So V is the voltage applied across the diode. All right. So now let's kind of uh, do a plot uh, to see what really is going on. Hmm? Something like this. So in this case, we call this IV characteristics. Okay. So this is I and uh, and this is my voltage V on this side. Okay. And the equation I gave you was I is equal to hmm? I S is the saturation current. Uh, and I'm going to explain each one of the terms uh, as we go along and how do you figure those out. V divided by Vt minus 1. Okay. Under reverse bias. Okay. So, which is V is less than 0. V is this potential. It's less than 0. All right. So, what do you, what, what will happen to our exponential V divided by Vt? Huh? It will be uh, basically this this particular number will start going to zero, right? Because it's a um, if v is negative, mm -hmm. then e to the power v divided by vt will be also less than one, all right? And then our i reverse bias is given by will be equal to i s minus i s because it's flowing in the opposite direction, okay? And this is what we call saturation current, which I'm going to explain to you uh, the contents of the saturation current. But for now, um, just let's call it saturation current only. All right. Now, if we let's so then in in our chart here, what you will see is really small is something like this. Okay, under reverse bias condition. The red is what I'm drawing there. All right. All right. Now let's say if we uh, if we forward bias the the diode, then what happens? So um, again, our same equation I is equal to I s e to the power v divided by v t minus one, and if v is much greater than v t, okay, then what happens? What will be this particular term? That will dominate, right? So minus it will be much larger. So then we can say that. Um, you know, under that condition, I is equal to approximately I s e to the power V divided by V t. Okay. The minus one part you can ignore. So, what, what are we seeing here then? What is the light bulb here? The dependence on voltage is exponential. Hmm, that, is the, that is the most important thing. So, what you will see then is you will see the characteristics that would look like this. Okay. And here is that exponential part of the dependence on voltage. Okay. So the current will increase exponentially with voltage. That's what you will see. Okay. So let's take a numerical example and then things will be very clear. Okay. I'll just do it on the side here. Okay. So let's say IS is given to you 2 10 to the power minus 16 amps. Okay. And Vt is given to you at room temperature is 26 millivolts huh, at room temperature. So I will just, um, I don't want you to calculate right now, but I'll just give you the numbers to 
to make you appreciate what's really going on. So on the on the left side we'll put V and on the right side we'll put I. And all I'm doing is I'm substituting the values um, for whatever voltage, what am I going to uh, get as current. And you can substitute to if you want to. Okay. So when you have 26 millivolts that you're applying a forward bias, okay, then the value of the current will be 5.4 10 to the power minus 16. Okay, minus 16 amps. That's what you'll get. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm just substituting the value uh, in this equation, this particular equation. So here I'm substituting 26 millivolts. So e, e to the power 1, correct? And then minus 1, so um, 2.7 something, right? Minus 1. So it will multiply that IS. Okay, and now we can, uh, let's say we make it 500 millivolts. Okay, so if you make it for 500 millivolts, this will become 45 nanoamps. Still small, nanoamps, a really small car. All right, uh, so not interesting still. Okay, and now we uh, kind of take it to 700 millivolts, and this becomes uh, close to now, now comes in microamps. So for such a small device, microamps is a large amount of current. Okay, now if we go from 700 to 750 millivolts. Okay, suddenly this will go exponentially higher and you will get 675 microamps. Okay, you can see just 50 millivolts has, you know, um, has increased the current. Okay, if you go to 800 millivolts, hmm, then this will become 4600 microamps. And if you say 850 millivolts, okay, then this will become 32000. 32, okay, one less zero microamp. Okay, so you can see how the current is increasing. Now you'll say, okay, why don't we keep increasing the current further and further, right? Huh? No such thing. What will happen? Huh? It'll be either it will be heat or blow up, or each one of these uh, P and N type of material, right? It has some resistance. So that resistance will start, as soon as the current will start flowing through the resistor, then it will start reducing the voltage actually applied. Now that's one way to look at it because a, um, even your wire will have some resistance. So as more and more current flows through that resistor, you will have, uh, you'll have a drop across it. That's another thing. So um, in a nutshell, what happens is to limit this current, you put, intentionally you put a resistor in the path. Okay. So that you can limit the current and I'm going to show you. So another example I want to give you uh, of this diode is a visual example of all of you. Many of you have, have lived in like a multi-story buildings when you were at home or no? You were living always in a single story home? Huh? Hostel. Hostel? I'm talking about before IIT. Your home? No? You have a nice bungalow? Okay, so even if you have a bungalow, right, what happens is there is water coming from the city uh, to your house and that water needs to be put into, um, put into some kind of tank in, on, on top of your house, right. I'm just giving you a visual example to, uh, so that you can relate with what's going on and see these examples which will stay with you uh, forever. That's why I'm giving you this example and next time you see this example, you'll remember how ah, this is a diode, okay. So what happens is that water will go up in the tank. And the water doesn't come 24 7, right? It only uh, your city will send water at certain time. Now, if you if it goes into the tank and if the water pressure goes away, what will happen? That water will drain back hmm, to the system. So it's no good. So what happens is there is something called NRV. Hmm, no return valve. Hmm, that's what is fit into uh, fit into this uh, this pipe. Okay, so the valve actually is very interesting to study uh, because I have studied it myself. Um, and um, what you what you'll see is like a it's like a pipe type of construction, and then it has a you know base, uh, a circular base, and then there is a flap. Okay, so circular flap. Now uh, what happens is if the water pressure hmm, is increasing from the bottom, then the flap will open. Okay, and the water will flow, it will go up. However, if the water pressure on this bottom side drops, the city turns off the water, what will happen? The flap will close and then what will happen? The water will not go back into the system. Okay, now um, other way to look at it, there is some spring mechanism here, hmm, which is holding the flap down. 
So if there is a spring mechanism, then I need to put some force uh, uh, to open that thing. And that's like your built-in potential, if you remember, right? So you need to overcome that built-in potential uh, beyond certain value for the flap to open. Um, and then once the flap opens, then the then the water will will continue to flow upstairs. So this is kind of a kind of a diode, you know, valve um, that that you can see in real life and kind of see the current flow. Uh, water is like current, flow of water is like current. Huh? So now let's uh, kind of, uh, you know, all the stuff that I have explained to you so far, right, this is kind of an ideal characteristics. Hmm? So let's do a little more unboxing, little peel more onion here uh, and see what really uh, uh, layers of the onion, if we remove, uh, what is really happening, okay. So on this, um, in the negative side, I'm kind of insinuating that no matter how much voltage I apply in the negative direction, this will continue perpetually, okay? It's not that good, okay? So what happens is, if you apply a negative uh, potential or a reverse bias potential to a diode, uh, what's happening to our electric field? Think, is it increasing? Yes. So if the electric field is increasing more, 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 then what do you expect happening under that electric field? Hmm? Our, uh, the electrons are getting a lot of velocity, uh, velocity V is equal to mu times E, okay, electric field. Uh, so this is velocity, uh, not voltage. Hmm. So they're getting more and more energy. Hmm. So they're really zipping through that area and they're really going at high speed. So they don't have time to think, they just bam, uh, they hit anything that comes in their way. Imagine that. And then they will knock off more electrons, whole pairs. Okay, so they'll go all over the map as you keep putting more and more electric field, right? So then what happens is slowly this thing is like, a, has anybody seen on one of your WhatsApp forwards, have you seen avalanche? Of course you have seen. Huh? There is an avalanche of snow. Uh, how it comes up, right? The initially, it starts with a small amount of snow and then it kind of uh, gathers force and then the similar thing will happen. So it's called an avalanche effect. So initially, there will be a few electron hole pairs and they will bombard, create more electron hole pairs. They will also go through that electric field, again bombard, phone more. And then this current will keep increasing, okay? So when you, um, what we will do now is we will, what this means is I'm kind of expanding the scale. Okay, it's not at the same scale as the rest of the side. And what you will see is, you will see an effect looks like this. Okay, and this is kind of like an avalanche hmm? breakdown. So, breakdown, the word by itself, does it sound desirable? It doesn't sound desirable, right? It's breakdown, like uh, we, we don't want to get there. So, um, because... When it comes to avalanche breakdown, there is so much, uh, so many electrons which are which are bombarding. The temperature will increase, all those things, and sometimes it can be irreversible. The the, the circuit, you know, uh, the diode may melt and become unusable. That can happen. All right. Uh, so um, so this avalanche effect is what you will see if you apply really large uh, large potential to our diode. All right. So. Um, the next thing um, we are going to see is um, if you, this avalanche effect, okay, is happening at certain potential uh, V large, okay, and this is kind of depends on the um, uh, doping level, okay. So if your doping levels are low, which is your p-type doping level and n-type doping level, they are low, then it will be the large voltage that you can apply. Now, um, we like to use this effect huh, uh, in a positive way. And that effect is called Zener effect, if you may have heard Zener. Okay, so there what we do is we intentionally increase the doping levels in our p-type and n-type, okay. Uh, and what that does is it, it allows us to control this where this breakdown will happen and then um, so in that particular case the breakdown happens somewhere here something like this and and this particular voltage is called um, V Zener okay so the avalanche breakdown is bad because it's uncontrollable 
but zener breakdown we we kind of uh, play with the the doping concentrations of p and n uh, for to to gain an advantage and this zener voltage can be fairly constant hmm, for a given diode and um, so it can be used as a reference voltage in many one of the circuits so let's say you say i have a 3 volt zener diode okay what that means is that if i put that reverse bios uh, re uh, the diode in a in a reverse bias fashion then there will be always 3 volts across it something like that and we are going to do a lot of circuits based on that all right so the the secret of zener is basically your doping level hmm? it's higher all right so both these effects right uh, you cannot just take a diode and uh, connect it across a uh, across a supply voltage right um, because if you don't control things properly you can either get into zener or avalanche effect and there will be a large amount of current which will flow into your circuit and that's not good so what we like to do is we generally like to insert a resistor in the path and resistor what will happen is let's say if i have a resistor in this path okay if the current keeps increasing what will happen there will be IR drop developed across that resistor, correct? And that will kind of limit the situation in terms of the damage that we can do. Is that clear? Because if the current starts increasing really large, then IR drop will increase and the voltage across the diode will reduce. So we will go through numerical examples about this. But I just want to give you an insight that it's always good to have rather than connecting the diode directly across a potential uh, you know, source, um, like a voltage source. Uh, you always put a resistor in series to limit this curve. Now we will kind of uh, dig in a little bit deeper. Uh, any questions so far? Huh? So that will generally uh, what happens is that if you depending on the size of the diode, huh, then you will there is some wattage rating that comes with the diode. This is a quarter watt diode. This is a half a watt diode. Okay, that's the power you can kind of handle with that diode. And essentially what you're doing, which is kind of perfect, what is your name? Anupam. Anupam, yes. Uh, so Anupam, you kind of asked me the question at the right time because that's what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, perfect. So, uh, but but the highlight I'll give you is that if you, if you make the size of the diode bigger, then what is happening to our cross-section? It's increasing. The area is increasing. So the larger the area, the more the current I can handle. So that's where I'm going next week. But before I get there, can can we uh, take more questions? Anything? Yeah, go ahead. What is your name? Ananya. Yeah, tell me. Why? Zener. Why did the graph move to the right side? Uh, you're talking about Zener effect. Okay, so uh, as I said, this um, avalanche effect, right, um, is kind of a function of what is your doping concentration. Okay, so you have ends of A and ends of B, right, if you make a PN junction diode. Now, if your doping concentration is not too high, hmm, then I have to apply more and more voltage to get into that Zener, uh, not Zener, the avalanche effect. Okay, that's the kind of a device physics, very high level explanation. But if I increase the doping concentration, hmm, ends of A or ends of B, which means I make a diode where it's highly P-type and highly N-type diode, okay, then we can we can reduce that voltage at which the, Z, the avalanche effect is happening. Hmm, and we can bring it closer so that it's usable. Because if I have a 15 volt, if the avalanche effect starts happening at 15 volts, then it's of no use to me because most of my circuits are less than 5 volts or 10 volts or something, right? So then I want to control where that effect is happening to a lower potential so that I can use it in circuits. And we're going to do a lot of circuits with Zener diode so that you, uh, so to do that, what do I do is I increase the doping concentration on the P side and N side. Huh? And if I increase that, then the voltage at which this effect will happen will come down. And we call that potential as a Zener potential. And the interesting part of that Zener voltage is kind of, um, it's very reproducible. If I have a Zener diode of 3 volts, which means exactly at 3 volts, it will give you the Zener effect. And that is controlled using what? Doping concentration, huh? ends of A and ends of B, using that. Thanks, Ananya. Any other questions? I think it's ISC constant at all. ISC? 
<laughs> all the all the yes yes i mean um, i'm going to get into is function right now you know what is it decided by uh, but it's independent of the potential okay i'll tell you what it depends on before i get there i want to make sure that we answer all the questions any other questions okay so all right so let's move on to the is aspect of it as um, you know all of you are saying so this is right the saturation curve so if we take a pn junction diode and let's only look at one side. So this is our ends of B and ends of A. Hmm. So this is N type and this is P type. Okay. So um, when uh, my ND is getting ND is large, that means I have a lot of electrons on this side, on the on the left side, and then they will start diffusing. Okay. So I'm going to show only one side so that we don't get confused, um, and you will see something that looks like this. Okay, so these are electrons. Okay, ND means high number of electrons on this side, right? So they will diffuse through in the P type material. Okay, now these electrons are minority carriers because they are inside the P type material. Okay, correct. Now the current IS, okay, is given by Q times A. A is the area of the cross section, correct? Uh, I think somebody had asked that question, right? The voltage related pressure. So if you increase the area, the current will increase. If you put two diodes in parallel, which means you double the area, which means the IS should increase. Agree? Okay? So it's, and also it's proportional to D ends of P by DX. What is this really telling you? So there is a diffusion going on. So the diffusion is phenomenon which is dependent on the slope of this this curve okay so the larger the slope the more will be the diffusion kind of like um, higher the concentration of the perfume the more it will spread kind of uh, like that okay so um, um, i mean if if the whole space is already saturated with perfume and if you push the push the perfume right then uh, the rate of diffusion will be very small correct because it's already but if uh, if the the place has no perfume at all huh? and then if you press the button then it will it will diffuse the diffusion current will be very high similarly if the water is already saturated with ink hmm, and if i drop an uh, you know small amount of ink then the diffusion will be very little because it's already saturated with ink Right? Or if the if the water has absolutely no ink, and then if you drop, uh, 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 if you put in a drop of ink, then it will it will go, it will diffuse faster. So similarly here, this is the rate of um, our uh, uh, you know concentration, how it changes. Okay, the slope here, and then um, the next part is called diffusion constant. So this is again, we are only talking about what's happening inside our P-type. Okay. And then we will uh, write one for the N-type also. I is this part clear what I'm trying to show? Okay. All I'm showing is what is my IS. Um, and we are only looking at uh, carrier transport in, uh, in the, in the P-type material. All right. Now, um, so this is our concentration gradient. No, I'm just showing you, you know, it will diffuse, right? Um, basically, I have a lot of uh, electrons on the left side uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the n-type, okay? So the electrons are diffusing inside the p-type of material. So I'm just showing that, okay, they are dropping. Now, this, that characteristic will depend on a whole bunch of things. Because this could be like this, it could be like this, we don't know. So, I'm just, and, and depending upon uh, the material properties, it will be different. And this is what captures the flow of that IS that we are talking about. Okay. Now, here, um, this will be uh, Q times a okay and and this uh, concentration gradient is given by uh, the concentration n i square by n of a okay which is the um, you know 
a minority carrier concentration in in our uh, p type material and divided by something called ln and this is the diffusion length and times dn this is the diffusion constant i'll give you um, units of each and everything uh, again i'm just showing you insights part of it and then we will um, with this we will build uh, the bigger equation okay i can give you just the final equation but that's not fun right so what is the insight i am telling you if you increase the area the is should increase right now if i have larger concentration na then what will happen our minority carriers in that region will start dropping correct as a, and this is what we see here if the na na starts getting larger then the minority carriers uh, in in our uh, right side will start dropping okay ln is something um, how quickly these uh, minority carriers which are electrons they are getting uh, recombined you know they are they are recombining in that region right because they will recombine with any holes which are around that area okay so that ln is uh, giving you that and dn is a diffusion constant dn is a diffusion constant which means like uh, if you have water versus oil the diffusion will be different okay something like that and again giving you a visual image imag imagination of all these things okay so um, now we will kind of now that we know what our is is made up of we will write the bigger equation okay so the bigger equation is going to be is is equal to q a n i square and then this is dn divided by n of a times ln plus dp divided by n of d and lp okay this is the um, equation for our um, uh, again i have combined it for both n side and p p type okay so um, I wanted to show you one first how I, I got that and then we can we can come up with the overall equation okay so a is the area of diode hmm. and then um, ni is our intrinsic carrier density n a and d n a is acceptor doping concentration and this is donor concentration okay now let's talk about units okay so um, a is in um, you can say c m square uh, and n i would be number per cm cube um, ends of a and this would be in number per cm cube okay and then uh, let's see our dp and dn they are given as cm square per volts second that's the unit uh, l's of n or l's of p is in micrometers so you have to make sure that you know you you use the proper units and make sure that they are uh, they jive with each other all right and then um, this is the equation for is and uh, the diode current id hmm, is given by is exponential v diode divided by vt minus 1 hmm. so vt being kt over q all right, sounds good. So I'm going to stop right here. If you have any questions, I will uh, I will take them now. Huh, follow. Huh. Huh. Uh, what is your name? Somadi. Uh, he has a very interesting question. What is NA and ND? I think that's your question, right? So if you um, if you have a uh, if you have an intrinsic silicon, right, then uh, and in that intrinsic silicon, if you add impurity, let's say you add boron impurity, huh? so number of atoms of boron that you substituted, okay, that's the concentration, 
that we are talking about and it's given as number per cm cube okay so if you have uh, you know 10 to the power 10 number of boron atoms then you will have that many carriers because boron will uh, create holes and that many number of free holes that you have inserted in the in our semiconductor okay so similarly phosphorus concentration is nd a donor concentration per cmq hmm? any other question yeah i have how does na Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, think about it this way, right? Um, what is the concentration of perfume compared to the outside room? It has to be higher than the intrinsic. Because if it's lower than kuch nahi hoga, it will go other way around. So, similarly, if you have intrinsic number, which is N and P, the concentration of the donor or the acceptor has to be higher. To Otherwise, it, there will not be any effect. Is that clear? Very good question. What is your name? Varad. Okay, thanks Varad. And there was one more question on this side. Yeah, so um, the way to look at it is a, it's a, it's a common term that you are having, right? Uh, think about it this way. Um, um, there is a, um, you are talking about this particular part. Huh? So, what I am saying is that the, um, on the left side, I have ND, uh, which is large uh, concentration of electrons. Okay, so they are going to diffuse uh, through my P type region. But the electrons which are diffusing, um, their value is like a minority carrier concentration. It will go up at the interface because they are coming from the left side. Okay, so the uh, when you are doing the diff diffusion um, calculation, right? Then um, now we are looking at this uh, this p-type material, and in that p-type material, uh, electrons are actually uh, your minority carriers, and that's why we are doing the minority carrier calculation. So It's not the Na, it's the Ni square divided by Na, right? If you if you look at this, it's actually Ni square divided by Na. Yeah, you will have other graph on the other side also. So what will happen? I, I now I see what your question is. Okay, so um, so typically what happens, right? You have you have Nd or Na. One of them is higher. You let one of them dominate. Okay, right now I'm showing you both of them are, huh, this is happening, this is happening. That's just to, for a sake of understanding. Typically you have P plus N diode or N plus P diode, something like that. Okay, so let's say I have a um, N plus P diode. N plus meaning a lot of N plus. And P is thoda sa hai, jada nahi hai. Okay, so then this, in this case, the ND will be high. Correct? So if the ND is high, that means my minority carriers in the N plus area will be very small, very small. However, on the P side, you have high number of minority carriers, right? And that's when that diffusion is happening, okay, at that interface, okay.